Chicago Media TV The Story of John D. Afranzo Reputedly a top figure in the Chicago outfit for decades, John D. Afranzo, 89, died on Monday of complications from dementia in his River Grove home, according to his grandson John. Despite more than two dozen arrests in his life, D. Afranzo, known in the media as No Nose for having part of his nose shot off by police in 1949 during an attempted robbery, mostly avoided prison and shunned the spotlight, living inconspicuously for decades in the near western suburb. D. I. Franzo was born in Italy and moved with his father, Michael, a metal plater, and his mother, Deloise, to Chicago in the mid-1930s. He attended Wells High School on the north side. In 1946, D. I. Franzo was arrested for burglary and was placed under court supervision for six months. In 1949, he was living in Stone Park when he was arrested at age 20 with an accomplice and charged with a robbery on the Gold Coast. More burglaries followed, so many that D. I. Franzo and his colleagues were referred to as the three-minute gang because they could burglarize a store and leave within three minutes, which was the average time it took police to respond to a burglar alarm. In December 1949, D. I. Franzo and an accomplice were looting the Faye Manning dress shop at 304 N. Michigan Avenue in Chicago when they were surprised by police. Both D. I. Franzo and his accomplice were shot and seriously wounded, with police shooting off part of D. I. Franzo's nose. He later underwent plastic surgery to repair his nose. D. I. Franzo was sentenced to six months in Cook County Jail in April 1950 on a charge of assault with a deadly weapon related to the dress shop burglary. For the rest of the 1950s, D. I. Franzo was part of the burglary gang run by the legendary thief Paul Peanuts Panchko, which specialized in rapidly stripping stores of entire stocks of merchandise. During the 2007 Operation Family Secrets Chicago Outfit trial in Chicago, Hitman turned prosecution witness Nicholas Calabrese testified that reputed mob boss John Nono's D. I. Franzo was among those involved in the 1986 murders of the Spilotro brothers. But D. I. Franzo was never charged in the killings and emerged otherwise unscathed from that massive federal prosecution that gutted much of the rest of the Chicago mob's leadership. There's no hint as to why he wasn't charged in 355 pages of investigative records that the FBI released in response to a Chicago Sun-Times public records request. D. I. Franzo was widely suspected of involvement in the brutal 1986 murders of brothers Anthony and Michael Spilotro, depicted in the film Casino. His role was discussed during the 2007 Family Secrets trial of outfit leaders. But D. I. Franzo was not a defendant in family secrets, and federal prosecutors were unable to assemble a convincing case against him. Attorney Lopez told CBS Chicago that D. I. Franzo's greatest achievement was beating the G. That situation was the result of Michel D. I. Franzo's earlier stays in the U.S. and a fair bit of confusion. He first crossed the Atlantic as a single 24-year-old reaching New York Harbor on August 16, 1923, and proceeding to Chicago's West Town to stay with his brother Pasquala, a resident of 1247 West Ohio Street. Just half a year later, Michel D. I. Franzo was naturalized a citizen at Cook County Superior Court or, at least, he thought he was. He managed to obtain a certificate of naturalization by providing some incorrect information about the date of his arrival and the length of his stay in the country. It seems he genuinely believed that he was an American citizen when he returned to Italy and took a dollarata as his bride in 1926. About a year after John's birth, Michel D. I. Franzo returned to the U.S. alone. This time, he claimed U.S. citizenship and referred to his naturalization at Chicago on February 8, 1924. He reported for the ship's manifest that he was heading to 515 Rosina Avenue. It seems likely that he meant 515 Rosina Avenue which was just a short walk from Pasquale's address on West Ohio Street. In the post-war years, John D. I. Franzo was a member of a burglary gang. The gang became known as the three-minute gang due to its quick work. It was reported that the average response time for the Chicago police to a burglar alarm was three minutes. 
The three-minute gang did not always live up to its billing. D.I. Franzo was arrested for burglary in 1946. As a result, he was placed under court supervision for six months. But that did not convince him to change his ways. His continuing activities cost him a chunk of his nose on December 14, 1949, and a bit of his freedom, following a prison sentence in 1950. D.I. Franzo and his accomplice were taken to Bridewell Hospital, where they were reported to be in critical condition with gunshot wounds to the abdomen. The press did not mention the nose wound. When D.I. Franzo recovered, he went from a hospital bed into a cell. He was sentenced in April 1950 to six months in prison for assault with a deadly weapon. Police believed they had finally broken up the three-minute gang credited with stealing an estimated $100,000 of garments from local shops. But this, too, was insufficient to deter D.I. Franzo. Following his release from prison, he went back to his burglary work, reportedly partnering for a time with Paul Peanuts Panchko. D.I. Franzo, 35, and then a resident of 73rd Avenue in the village of Elmwood Park was found to be the lead collector and enforcer of the gang. Joseph Joe Gags Gagliano, 49, of 1731 Thatcher Road in Elmwood Park was believed to be its chief. Joseph Joey the Clown Lombardo, 33, was a member. Investigators learned that the gang met March 9, 1961, with William Willie Potatoes Dodano, supervisor of outfit rackets in Kane, Dupage and McHenry counties. Dodano suggested that they expand their influence by channeling loan sharking profits into legitimate businesses. The gang then met August 4, 1961, with Dodano and Mad Sam De Stefano. De Stefano led his own gang of outfit loan sharks in northwest Chicago. Charges were brought against the gang members in December 1963. John D. I. Franzo was accused of being one of those who kidnapped, threatened, and tortured Weissfall. John D.I. Franzo attempted to keep a low profile. In contrast with Ferriola, who immediately followed his promotion with the construction of a brick mansion in an exclusive Oak Park neighborhood, D.I. Franzo resided with his wife Rosemary in an apartment at 8065 West Grand Avenue in the village of River Grove just west of Elmwood Park. But D.I. Franzo quickly learned that being top man in the Chicago underworld meant a low profile was impossible. A federal indictment unsealed on January 10, 1992, charged D.I. Franzo, Samuel Carlisi and eight others with conspiring to gain control of gambling at a proposed casino at the Rincon Indian Reservation in California's San Diego County. The indictment, which charged defendants with racketeering, extortion, mail fraud and wire fraud, was based upon government wiretap evidence. The extortion offense stemmed from outfit efforts to extort $225,000 from five men who owed loan shark debts to the murdered Anthony Spilotro. D.I. Franzo, then 63, and co-defendant Michael Karachi, 53, of Bensonville, were arrested in Chicago, processed and freed on bond. 70-year-old Carly C. was arrested at his western, Florida, home as he was heading out for a round of golf. The list of defendants also included underworld associate Chris Petty and a San Diego attorney, Nicholas DePento. All faced trial in San Diego. According to prosecutors, the outfit presented several proposals through Petty and DePento to the Rincon tribe to obtain a contract to operate the planned casino and bingo parlor on the reservation. Mob financing for the proposals was withdrawn after several months when it was observed that a similar operation in the Baltimore area was losing money. Petty went in search of other investors and unluckily came into contact with an undercover federal agent posing as a money launderer for a Colombian cocaine dealer. Federal investigators were aiming for reputed underworld leaders D.I. Franzo and Alphonse Pizza Altornabin when they launched Operation Family Secrets at the end of the 1990s. Benefiting from the cooperation of Nick Calabrese, son of longtime outfit big shot Frank Calabrese Sr., the FBI was able to assemble evidence of mob murders, loan sharking, gambling and conspiracy committed by mob by mob bosses. However, 
Di Franzo and Tornabin were not included in the list of defendants when the family secrets case came together in the early 2000s. So much to take in from this story if you want to express your opinion send me your thoughts. As always like, comment, and subscribe for more videos.